How are you doing folks? We're still in County Clare, still in Kilrush, um, a little bit of an echo on site here. We're inside Joe Whelan also has this, it's the Museum of Irish Rural Life. It's inside in Kilrush, we walked through some of it there, it is just fantastic. This is, this is beautiful stuff. It's here for you, it's, it's raining outside, so we're absolutely perfect inside. Uh, we're going to turn the camera and give a look at the selection of tractors. We came in here first because it's getting dark and we have a selection of photographs and petrol cans and steering wheels and the whole lot up on the wall. So we're going to turn the camera here and um, we'll give a look at what's in front of us. Okay guys, this is it. This is how it started. The Ferguson Brown. Okay, I'm going to tell you the story. Um, Harry Ferguson came up with the idea, not of the engine, but the back end. The lift arms, okay? He could get absolutely no one to make it for him. The first couple of tractors were Ferguson, what they call Ferguson Blacks. I think they had a standard engine in them. And, um, but like I said, they, that's Harry Ferguson. That's the three point linkage that's on every tractor, that's on the more modern Fergusons, that's on everything up along, okay? That's, that is it. So the story has, they made five or six of them, they were known as the Ferguson Black. Um, but then after a while, he teamed up with David Brown. David Brown at the time was only, only famous for making and producing gearboxes. Um, that's all he did. Uh, going back, I suppose, 100 years ago, maybe 150 years ago, um, he was known for producing timber gears. And I presume grandfather wasn't the same man all along. Um, but then he produced this tractor, and himself and Harry Ferguson had a falling out. And what the falling out was, was... Um, David Brown wanted to make a bigger tractor, but Harry Ferguson said no. And even at the time, um, David, Harry Ferguson only wanted, I think it was three gears, he wanted a, a first, second, and a reverse. That's all Harry Ferguson wanted. And it was a bit of a battle between himself and uh, David Brown to put in the third gear. David Brown convinced him eventually to put in a road gear into the gearbox, and they did. They went from there. Um, after a while they fell out, they had a big falling out, and they went from there then to, he went to Henry Ford. And this is the Ford Ferguson. If you look here at the badge in the front, it's the Ford with the Ferguson system, um, made in USA. So this was made in the USA. She's the Ford with the Ferguson system. Um, like I said, now at the time, that's the falling out now with, with Harry Ferguson, or with you know, uh, David Brown. And he, this is the famous handshake agreement he had. Actually, there's pictures here on the wall, if we can turn on. That's the famous handshake agreement. If you know of anyone that has seen it, and you have seen pictures of that in the, in the thing. And that's Ferguson Black and the plow. And that's Harry Ferguson above in, I, that's, I'd love to go there. Apparently, there's a lovely museum there. And he went on from that. And of course, he had a major falling out then with... Henry Ford and that went on for ages and they had a major falling out and they ended up in court cases and Harry Ferguson actually tried his best to destroy Henry Ford in every newspaper in the world in America um, but it didn't succeed if anything it promoted Ford um, Harry Ferguson then went on to make his own tractor it was the stand it wasn't the standard it was the Coventry engine um, there was a very few of them made um, and eventually he sold the company um, to Massey Harris. Now we're talking Massey Harris now after this. I bet you if we look here, if we can see the name place, uh, made in England, I can't see it, Coventry, England, um, Massey Ferguson. This is still a Massey Ferguson. I thought at this stage we were going to uh, Massey Harris, but we're not. Uh, this is the, the, oh, she's the P3. She's the Perkins engine. She's the P3 conversion. And um, now at this stage, we are definitely after teaming up with uh, Massey Harris, because we have the, the red. The red is the, the Massey Harris, of course. And um, it went from that then, and we're going to swing the, the camera back around here. They joined up here. They went from the 20, the Ferguson 20, and then they went to the Ferguson 35, and then they went to the 35X, and... They went on and on and on, and fa absolutely fantastic tractors. These are just 
lovely tractors. These are making big money, serious money tractors. Like, here's a 35X yellow. And of course, in the 35X, um, they went on to the 135. The 135, of course, everyone knows what the Massey Ferguson 135 is. Um, it's just, I suppose, a phenomenal tractor. It is just, they're making serious money. I won't even comment on price-wise, but go on the deal, go on the internet, you will see them yourself. And of course, then we had the Ferguson um, the 65. Again, a beautiful tractor, but of course, a small, the baby version of the 95, which is for sale in, which was for sale in America. To the best of my knowledge, the, this type was only available in Ireland, um, the 65. And then the 65, of course, became the 165. The 165, again, being um, just a, an updated version of it. And at this stage now, it's just Massey Ferguson. Harry Ferguson has gone from the, the company, completely gone from the company, but they have the the Massey Ferguson 165, and I think later on became the 188. That's lovely 188, I was above there looking at it. Um, she is a 188 with multi-power. And of course you had different versions. You had, um, is she a narrow, tell me? She's, she is, or she's not a narrow. I thought she was a narrow one, but she's a 133. Um, she has the extra, the, the foot throttle, I think as far as I know, that was an additional extra when you bought it new. Um, but the 133 didn't have live drive. To the best of my knowledge, that's kind of the only major difference. Of course, it was just slightly cheaper than the 135, um, so they didn't have live drive. There's several stories of Harry Ferguson and all down along through the years. He's a fierce, interesting man. Like, how Harry Ferguson got his first uh, few pounds to invest in the Ferguson Black was there was a competition ran by the British government. You remember that time we were completely under UK rule. There was a, a competition ran by the British government to, to see who was the first person to go to fly a plane in Ireland. And at the time, Harry Ferguson worked in his brother's bicycle shop. And he went away and he built, designed and flew his own plane. Was there any pictures of a plane around the place? No. Um, he built and designed and flew his own plane, so he was the first man to fly a plane in Ireland. And at that time, I'm talking probably 1920s, maybe whenever, I'm not too sure of the years, but at that time, there was um, nobody flying in Ireland, and they went to the, uh, I can't even think, Harry Ferguson, the prize money anyway was £500, and he invested it in that tractor, and that's how he got his... His start, you know, it was money, it takes money, but he teamed up then with, with David Brown, he teamed up with Henry Ford, and eventually teamed up with Massey Harris, and of course, the Perkins conversion. This would have originally been a, a petrol tractor, a petrol TVO, like this one here. This is a petrol TVO, and um, they would have converted it uh, into... Uh, a three cylinder, probably she, she's probably a P3, so that means she's a three cylinder. I can't really see, it's fairly dark. Yeah, she's a P3. And how you know the difference straight away by looking at it is look at the, look at the steering wheel, look at the gap here and the gap below. You, even if you know nothing about tractors, um, of course, the P3 conversion. Of course, Perkins again have a massive history because um, how Perkins started out was Perkins bought a couple of E27N forts and majors off of um, Ford at the time, wasn't too happy with their output. Uh, there were petrol tractors again, and he designed his own six-cylinder engine, and he put in his own six-cylinder uh, engine into three of them, and done his own plowing and his own everything for years um, as part of his the whole thing. Now, guys, this is just a small selection of what is here in the in the museum. Um, this is just a small selection of what's here in the museum. More stuff outside the yard. There's more stuff above in the shed. But you know what? I never knew that was here. I've wanted to see one of them with years. Um, I'm going to get a picture of me sitting up on it there now. So um, you're going to see that very shortly. Um, but look, this is here. These are here. Um, it's the, uh, the Museum of Irish Rural Life um, in above here. Let's, and it's just in Kilrush. It's just beautiful. These are fantastic tractors. Um, I have something very similar to that, but um, don't have it yet. 
There's a one cylinder, there's a two cylinder, more two French engine fitted. That's another story I can tell you about for years. Um, the, the French part of the deal was building tractors and exporting tractors. Certain amounts of them had to have a French engine in them. So guys, that's it. If you want to see some of this, um, make this place off.